Editing Part 1. View this lecture after reading Chapter 4, Editing and Understanding Movies. Review the film grammar sheet in the module on D2L to aid in the note-taking process. The videos in the supplemental playlist enhance this lecture. The Cutting Edge, The Magic of Movie Editing, 2004. Students are strongly encouraged to watch this documentary. Presently, the entire film is available on YouTube. Availability subject to change. Why edit? In this lecture, we'll cover styles and techniques that establish the rules and conventions of editing as a language in film. But have you ever stopped to think about what editing is exactly? Editing, or cutting, is the joining of two separate shots so that the first shot is instantaneously replaced by the second. The finished version of a film is called a cut. Cut is the grammar word used when breaking down a scene into a collection of shots, medium shot, cut to a close-up, cut to a long shot. Did you know before film was edited digitally, editing was the act of cutting and taping or gluing shots together? This is where the term cut comes from. Two examples of early editing equipment, a film splicer and an editing flatbed. An editing style makes up the organization of a film. An editing style dominates the way a film is put together. An editing style is like a language in film. We'll focus on classical cutting and continuity editing in this lecture. Before editing, mid-1890s in France, Lumiere brothers bring their short films to the public. This establishes the social and cultural component of film. The cinematograph allowed the Lumiere brothers to bring their films to a public audience. It was a camera, developer, and projector, all in one machine. Overview of film before editing, mid-1890s in France. Lumiere Brothers invented the cinematograph. Lumiere Brothers' early films contained no editing and no camera movement. They were single-shot recordings or sequence shots. Each lasted the duration of one roll of film, one or two minutes. The duration of the shots in the event were equal. Lumiere Brothers' contribution. Even though their films didn't contain editing, by creating a public interest in film, they plant the seeds of change. One budding filmmaker was especially inspired by the Lumiere brothers. His name is George Milliers. Watch A Trip to the Moon to see one of the first examples of cutting to continuity. George Milliers uses cutting to continuity to create episodic films by connecting sequences. Editing and camera placement still based on live theater. The camera is stationary and outside of the action. Cutting to continuity is like a curtain coming down and then opening in a new location. Cutting to continuity is a technique used in most fiction films today. Giannetti says, it's a shorthand existing of time-honored conventions Cutting to continuity tries to preserve the fluidity of an event without literally showing all of it. Time. Editing frees the world of film from the time constraints of the real world. 120 minutes of film time can equal one day, one month, one year, or even 1,000 years. Cutting to continuity can take a long event and condense it down into a few shots. Edwin S. Porter directed Life of an American Fireman and The Great Train Robbery. Use editing to create parallel action or cross-cutting. An early example of parallel action from Edwin S. Porter's film, The Great Train Robbery. Shot A, 
are robbers holding up a train station. In shot B are police on horseback with guns. Parallel action happens by cutting between the two different lines of action. The shots are not linear. Shot B does not pick up where shot A left off. Instead, they're linked by the continuity of an idea. Parallel action has to do with space. Parallel action implies that the action is taking place in two separate locations at the same time. By cross-cutting between the police and the robber, the viewer links the two sequences and parallel action takes shape. When you say, I was on the edge of my seat, chances are it was parallel action that put you there. Techniques. So far, we've examined two early but influential techniques, cutting to continuity and parallel action. In the beginning, editing wasn't a full-fledged film language. Think of editing techniques like words. When cut together, they create a language. Classical cutting. D.W. Griffith is sometimes called the father of filmmaking in America for using editing within scenes to very dramatic intensity. He expanded on the visual explanation by juxtaposing long shots, medium shots, and close-ups, varying the length of shots, and shifting the attention within a scene. Innovation in Editing D.W. Griffith expands upon the existing editing techniques of the day to create a full-fledged language. At its heart, classical cutting is continuity editing. It becomes a way for Hollywood to streamline the process of cutting a film together. Continuity editing, a style of editing designed to be invisible, functions to move the story forward without calling attention to itself. Classical cutting is the term used for Hollywood's application of continuity editing during the Golden Age. The master shot technique. The scene is first shot in its entirety from a long shot. The action is then repeated many times. Without a master shot, editors may not have adequate footage. Techniques in continuity editing. Be sure to view the examples on the supplemental playlist on D2L. Copyright laws prevent me from embedding the videos within the lecture, but they're very important. Cutting on action. Action begins in one shot and then ends in another. Cutting on dialogue. Motivated by who is talking or listening. Cutting on glance. The edit follows the eyes of the character and creates a point of view shot. Rules of continuity. Believe it or not, cutting a film together is a rather complicated process. The average Hollywood film shoots over 200 hours of footage. It's necessary to shoot a scene from numerous angles and positions. The 30 degree rule. The angle and or position of the camera must vary at least 30 degrees between shots. Cutting on action must obey the 30 degree rule. This storyboard follows the 30 degree rule. It starts with a full shot of the subject, then it cuts to a medium shot of the subject and also changes the angle and then ends with a medium close up of the subject and changes the angle as well. The 180 degree rule. You'll see an imaginary circle in the image on the right that is bisected, creating two 180 degree arcs. To maintain visual continuity, the camera must stay on one side of this invisible 180 degree arc. If the camera crosses the line, it causes a break in continuity. Cutting on dialogue must obey this rule. A jump cut, a noticeable break or skip in continuity. 
happens when the 180 degree or 30 degree rules are violated. A jump cut is an undesirable effect in continuity editing and classical cutting. Jump cut example from the French New Wave film, Breathless. Juxtaposing a close-up next to another close-up will result in a jump cut. The transition between shots will be noticeable. This is a violation of the 30 degree rule and it would never be used on purpose inside the style of continuity editing. However, we'll see examples of jump cuts used purposefully in the Editing 2 lecture. Tatsi, 2005. This South African film is directed by Gavin Hood. It is the assigned film for the Editing 1 and Editing 2 lectures. Response questions for Tatsi. And remember, Tatsi applies to both editing lectures. Question one, how is editing used to inform the viewer about Tatsi's childhood? Or question two, how is continuity editing used in Tatsi? Give specific examples. You're choosing one question here and students should watch the film after each editing lecture. Films featured in this lecture, students are encouraged to explore these films. You can pull the PDF version of the lecture up on D2L to take a closer look. I thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a productive week.